Welcome back to Bombadil Tree Farm. An American Tree Farm System certified family forest since 1978 and the proud recipient of Maine's Outstanding Tree Farmer of the Year Award for the year 2022. We ended chapter five of this series with 15 acres, which is about six hectares, of our winter 2019 clear-cut harvest, distrenched in preparation for replanting. Of these, approximately 12 acres, or about five hectares, also required control of competing vegetation that we accomplished by herbicide application. As you recall from chapter four of this series, our 10 acre or four hectare northeast clear cut was blessed with wonderful natural regeneration of predominantly aspen. And we decided to perform an enrichment planting of spruce within this block without any site preparation. I plan to hand plant all seedlings myself over a period of three to four years, doing so during a brief few days each May or June. However, this invites regrowth of competing vegetation in herbicide-treated blocks. To reduce this problem, I applied herbicide just prior to planting the June 2021 and 2022 blocks, and during the summer of 2022, sprayed the blocks scheduled for planting in 2023 and 2024. There is an ancient bit of wisdom that goes something like this. When is the best time to plant trees? The answer, 20 years ago. When is the next best time to plant trees? The answer, today. So I invite you to join me as I head off on June 2nd in the year 2021 to begin planting the first trees in our 2019 clear cuts. En route to our planting site, please share with me the special joy of passing through this beautiful spruce forest that 43 years ago I planted when but a young man. Since that day in 1978, there have been many 20 years ago and many todays, resulting in thousands of trees populating acres of forest here on Bombadil Tree Farm that otherwise would not be. Our first planting site is not part of the degraded woodlot that we clear cut. Those clear cuts appear across the top of this satellite image. It is a small patch outlined here in gold that I decided to incorporate into our overall harvest and reforestation plan. This approximately two acre harvest block has very, very special meaning to me. It was part of an abandoned agricultural field that I replanted into white spruce back in the year 1978, saw them grow to maturity and harvested them in the year 2019. Now I'm blessed with the opportunity to begin a second forest on this same site. The harvest block might look messy, but a full growing season after our 2019 harvest. What you see is mostly logging slash and not aggressive vegetation. Consequently, we decided to plant the inverted furrows left by the disc trencher without any herbicide treatment. <laughs> 
Animals in the surrounding forest are also at work today. The knocking that you just heard is that of a polyated woodpecker going after insects within a rotting tree. Our seedlings are high quality Norway spruce. The botanical name is Picea abies that were nursery grown in multi-compartment plastic trays. These kind of seedlings are commonly referred to as containerized stock or plugs. Keeping their roots moist is essential to survival. So I carry the trays of seedlings in a shallow layer of water in the bottom of this tub made from an old fuel oil tank. At the planting site, we remove several trays to allow excess water to drain off before attaching them to my planting harness. There is a tool specially designed for just about every purpose, and that applies to planting tools as much as it applies to pliers and wrenches. This hollow cone-shaped planting dibble cuts and removes a core of firm soil whose dimensions match that of our plugs. The plugs perfectly fit the resulting holes requiring only a light boot kick and often none at all to firm the soil around the plug. This tool is designed for planting in firm undisturbed soil. It is not the right tool for planting in the loose soil of our inverted furrows. In loose soil, the walls of the holes it makes partially cave in upon tool removal, leaving holes that are too shallow and poorly formed to properly accept seedlings. This is the Potapudki planting tube that was designed for planting in loose soil like that of an inverted furrow. After insertion into loose soil, a foot pedal spreads its jaws, allowing a plug dropped into the top of the tube to fall into the hole made in the soil. With jaws still open, the pot of put is withdrawn, the jaws closed by a spring mechanism activated by a hand trigger, and one or two boot kicks closes the soil around the plug. The spreading jaw mechanism is not rugged enough to stand up to repeated use in firm or rocky undisturbed soil and soon fails. Moreover, in such soils, the spreading jaw action not only compresses the surrounding soil resulting in suboptimal conditions for root expansion of the seedlings, but also makes for a hole that requires multiple forceful boot kicks to close. In the loose soil of our inverted furrows, we do not encounter those problems, and the potted putki is the ideal tool. The potted putki has developed a bad reputation for mechanical failure among many tree planters here in Maine and the adjacent maritime provinces of Canada. I strongly suspect that it arises from using the tool in soil that it was never designed to plant. A friend gave me my pot of putki with the jaw mechanism in need of repair, almost certainly as a result of using it in firm, rocky soil. I repaired it and have since planted several thousand trees in the loose soil of inverted furrows without any failure or even signs of wear. Now you've seen how an amateur does it me. And now I'm going to take you to a, another YouTube video that shows a real professional at work.
Hey, now wasn't that guy good? But then again, you know, I think the Scandinavians have it in their genes to do everything in forestry better than anyone else in the entire world. For our enrichment planting here in the undisturbed soil of our northeast clear cut, we will use the cone-shaped dibble. The final site for us to plant in June 2021 is this two-acre block, slightly less than one hectare, within our southernmost clear cut. It had a heavy cover of competing vegetation, mostly raspberries and woody stump sprouts, so we sprayed it with herbicide the day before planting. We could do this because the herbicide we used gains entry into plants only through their leaves and has no residual soil activity. Our pesticides label specifies how long we must wait after application before entering a treated area. For agricultural crops, the no entry period is four hours. For forestry use, we may re-enter after the spray mixture has dried on the target foliage. In our case, that was less than an hour. We were clearly in compliance by not re-entering until the following day. On September 11th, 14 weeks after planting, I checked back on this site and was greeted by this lovely sea of bracken fern gently waving in the breeze. Although our herbicides label lists bracken fern as a susceptible species approved for control, we sprayed before its foliage had adequately emerged and it thereby escaped herbicide injury. We had a dry summer and the fern's partial shade provided protective shelter for our infant seedlings. I would like to say that I planned for this, but I did not. Some would say that it just happened by accident. I prefer to think that Mother Nature appreciated our efforts and wanted to lend a helping hand. I have laid blue ribbons at the base of a couple of our youngsters so that you can more easily pick them out. I have planted a lot of trees over many years and have never seen seedlings look so good at the end of their first season in the ground. They are green and healthy with turgid needles and have set robust buds in preparation for next year's growth. In the next chapter of this series, we will return to take a look at our baby trees after they have had an additional summer to grow. We will also provide an update on the remaining sites that we plan to plant in 2022, 2023, and 2024. One of the interesting trees I felled during this winter's harvest was this red spruce that was hit by lightning last summer. In addition to the lightning bolt shredding a streak down its side, it blew off the top now seen lying here beneath the snow. The lightning bolt also exploded several meters of the stem below the blown off top, but I was still able to salvage two very good quality logs. I completed this winter's timber harvest about three weeks ago, and my final truckload rolled out on February 10th, 2023. Until next time, Kathy and I bid you a pleasant farewell from Bombadil Tree Farm, located just outside Ashland, Maine, in the United States of America.